Welcome back everyone, Mariah here, and yes, I'm alone. <laughs> so I made that the title of this video because I just went from living with my friends and being around people for the last six months, being around people a lot more than I usually am ever around people. I'm gonna be talking about how that changed my eating habits, the pros and the cons of living with people, going back to visit my family in California, living with friends over the last six months, just being around people constantly and the pros and cons, like I said, of how it changed my eating habits. Okay, so I what I enjoyed about this is that throughout my entire fasting journey, I there's so many people within this community that have families that they need to provide for in the kitchen. And I think that it was really hard for them to relate to me because I was a single person, I lived by myself. It was really easy to just throw everything, throw everything out of my you know kitchen and just go on a long fast or eat a certain diet because I could create that discipline in the kitchen, right? Like that changes everything. And so living with people was extremely interesting. I honestly wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to handle it. I usually have a very hard time living with people. I become resentful over like my space, but what I learned in the process is, is when you get the opportunity to live in a really nice house for free, you you don't get mad about a lot. There's like nothing to get mad about. I was like left on good terms with everyone in the household and I was able to just like tolerate and accept people and their living situations for what they were. So what like one of the first things I learned was I cooked for other people in this process. There was no one else that really wanted to prepare food for the entire house. One person like hired a private chef that would bring food every once in a while, but I was the only one that would prepare food for the entire household. I liked this because it taught me more about food. I try new things like I make a fantastic butter chicken and because someone is dairy free in the house, I did it with olive oil and it was phenomenal. I had never even had butter chicken before, but because of things like that, I was eating way more rice than I was ever eating before. And I started to kind of pick up similar habits as others in the house. Another hard thing for me was on top of that, the food management. So people throw, throw things in the fridge and then they wouldn't like check the fridge before going to the store. So there was just duplications. There was a ton of waste. There was food getting thrown away constantly. Also because of people's like travel situation. And so I'm a person that really doesn't like food to go to waste. And because of that, I would eat things I normally wouldn't eat just so they wouldn't go to waste. And like rice ended up being one of those things, even though it's like super cheap. But I had a really hard time handling the amount of waste because I rarely ever throw away food. I'm very particular about food management in my own household. And so that was something that was uh, definitely challenging. So another thing was, you know, my friends offering takeout, like, oh, hey, we're going to go. It was always Panda Express. Would you like some? And I would say that I declined probably like 65, 70% of the time. But then towards the end there, I literally like tasted the honey sesame, I think, chicken from Panda Express. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is delicious. And then I would get like chow mein. I'm like, this is a treat because I never allow myself to have this kind of stuff. I was proud of myself for the amount of times that I said no, but in return, I also ate like, for example, pa Panda Express and Cold Stones a lot more frequently than I had ever ate it before. So that was something that I was pretty good at saying no most of the time. But if it was a moment where I was like too tired to cook or I was just like craving something like not the healthiest, I would totally, totally go for it. Another component was just foods in the house that I would never buy. Like the big jar of chocolate almonds from Costco, which are incredible, but I would never buy a jar like that for myself and leave it in the house. But this is part of the problem is that we were staying in like an Airbnb. So there were like the pantry was closed. So all of the food was just on the counter. So it wasn't like, you know, you could hide it and like hide other people's food and put it in the pantry and like not see it all the time. So it would just be so easy if I had like a sweet tooth um, after eating a meal to just grab something like that. And then there was just candy bars everywhere. There were chips everywhere. Um, those flat pretzels, I think they're called pretzel crisps. Those were in the house. So. In times where I was like lazy and not wanting to prepare food, I would just grab those things. 
And so there's also a lot of ice cream in the house and just all the food being out. And then like my friends just love junk food. Okay. That was a really, that was a hard component of it because I feel like it was more accessible when it came to sweets. It was also really interesting um, to be around people and see their habits around food and their frequency of eating. So there was like six permanents in the house, um, four people, normal weight. Okay, I'm overweight, obviously. And then there was one other person who was also overweight in the household, okay? So taking him out of the equation, I just was, after a few months, I'm like, I feel like I eat pretty normal compared to everyone else in this household. And it was kind of hard to accept like that they were just normal weight. Like my friend would wake up at 2 a.m. and go eat raw cookie dough out of the fridge. She would wake up in the morning and have all the chocolate covered almonds for breakfast. It was an intake of sugar that I didn't actually think was humanly possible. Okay, the eating habits, or mind blowing. And I look at these people like, wow, like you have normal bodies, like you are a normal weight. And so that was actually sort of challenging to accept. Um, like, I wouldn't say I had any envy around it, but it was just kind of a wake up call that for me, it's always going to be that extra challenge when it comes to like being a normal weight. And that kind of just, put things into perspective for me. Um, it also made me question and realize, okay, so, I mean, I would be so curious to know if she would track her calories for the day, right? And I think it really comes down to calorie intake um, over anything else. So maybe even though she was eating all of these sugary foods, maybe her caloric intake was still lower than mine. I'm not really sure, but it was quite, shocking to be completely honest um i also there was a component of changing the way i cook so like if i'm cooking something for myself i put little to no oil okay um if i'm cooking like vegetables i'll use like water instead of oil just to have just to make sure the calories are less right but if i'm cooking for other people i cook very differently because if my name's going to be on that meal i want it to be exceptional i want it to be so delicious and so I'm gonna put extra oil, right? I'm gonna put extra seasoning, extra butter. Like it's going to be like restaurant delicious, all right? That's why everything at restaurants tastes so good. It's like all of the extra oils and butter and everything. So because of that, I would also eat those things too, okay? If I'm like preparing someone like a breakfast sandwich, right? If I was making it just for myself, I'm able to accept it at a lesser version because I know it has less calories, but because I was cooking for other people, I changed my cooking habits um, or changed the way that I seasoned food and cooked food because I want it to be amazing, right? Like it's like a pride aspect to it. I'm not going to make it extra healthy. I'm gonna make it taste delicious. So that was something that was also interesting about being with others. If it was like my family that I was like, you know, but it was like my friends, right? Like I am gonna cook them a delicious meal. I'm not trying to like, if I had kids or like a husband, like keep them on some like strict low calorie diet or whatever. Um, another thing that was super interesting was I realized that I actually have somewhat of a fear when it comes to eating around others. So I actually realized this when I was away from the household and I was at a party and I realized like how I feel so awkward eating around other people. Um, and I literally woke up one morning at 4 a.m. and it just hit me. And I thought about my actions from the day before at that party I was at. And I'm like, you know, that's really odd. I actually avoided eating because like I was holding a drink and like maybe I was uncomfortable because I was at Peter Schiff's house, but I put my, uh, like, I'm like, I don't wanna put my cup down. And I'm just like, like, I don't want my face to get dirty. Like, I don't want there to be things in my teeth. Like, I just like overthought it, you know? And then I realized at the household, anytime I would make myself food um, just for myself, I would kind of go hide in a corner so that no one would bother me or watch me. And I think that I always, there's also a component to where I feel sometimes judged. And so like, I won't buy ice cream at the store 
like most of the time because I'm embarrassed. Like I get embarrassed about things, which is like so pathetic. I'm fully aware of that. But these are things that I'm working on, right? So I realized that I hide when I eat because I don't want to be judged. And this would be like, I'm not eating unhealthy things. Like I'm eating like eight ounces of just ground beef, you know, like that's pretty darn healthy. It's super nutrient dense. Um, there's nothing inflammatory about that. There's no like over-processed oils in it. Like in my opinion, it's a healthy meal. But then there was also perceptions from other people in the house that like red meat is high cholesterol. But then I also realized something. This is a, I keep on like remembering and realizing things. I also realized that there was someone in the household that ate like chicken and broccoli all the time just because he enjoyed it, not because he was like cutting. And I'm like, you're hungry all the time because that chicken has like no nutrients in it or like very low nutrients compared to if you were eating red meat. It's like you're hungry all the time because you're eating chicken. And I say this because when I first was in there, it was in that household, he wanted chicken. So I would cook chicken. I had literally never cooked raw chicken before until moving into the house last October. And what I realized that I'm starving all the time when all I'm eating is chicken, starving. It would literally, I would eat it. And then like within 90 minutes to two hours, I'm like super hungry again. So then I started getting back into my liver burgers and I noticed a complete difference when it came to that. So I realized my fear when it comes to eating around others, I overthink it way too much and it's something that I need to work on. And I never actually realized it until living in the household. So another thing I realized is proximity to the kitchen matters. This house was huge, okay? This is an eight bedroom house, massive. I am on the opposite side of the house as the kitchen. So what I learned is that when you're so far from the kitchen, you don't really visit the kitchen nearly as often. It feels like a chore because right now, if I walk to my kitchen, I'm thinking I could get there in 14 steps. In this household, it would probably be a hundred steps to get to the kitchen from my bedroom or my work area. So I just went to the kitchen a heck of a lot less. It also felt like a chore to go to the kitchen. Like there were some nights where I would just be in bed. I'm like, I'm so tired. I'm like, but I'm also slightly hungry and I still feel like I'm in a recovery phase where I can't let my body feel too hungry for too long because I want it to feel safe, that safe, that's like my goal. And so I'm like, it honestly feels like having to walk over to the next town to get a meal. And so I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. So that was a really interesting dynamic of how things change when it came to proximity to the kitchen. And then also there's a component of, I'm a person that I prefer to eat at home most of the time. There is a control factor that I want to know exactly what I'm eating. And for me, I don't like to have one big meal. I kind of rather have more small meals throughout the day. And I just want the control over my food. So I don't really eat, or eat out very often, but in this household, eating out was a very frequent thing. And so it's like constantly getting invited. And I felt like rude to turn it down. So there was just a lot more eating out scenarios than if I was just living by myself. One thing also is that my drinking consum consumption of alcohol, that frequency skyrocketed, okay? I'm not really sure why. I wouldn't even call it like a party house. The majority of the people in the house, some of them have never drank or done drugs once in their entire life. Um, I am a person that before living there, I never had alcohol in my household just because I didn't really I thought it was weird to drink at home alone, okay? So I never did it. But in this environment, it's like there's a pool outside. It was just like, I kind of dedicated these six months to just enjoying it to the fullest, you know? Having as much fun as possible. I'm like, this is a rare opportunity. How often do you get the chance to live in a big, beautiful house with all of your friends in an eight bedroom house with a beautiful pool? Like, I have never lived in a soup in a place that nice before. So for me, it was like a super unique experience. And I'm just like, you know what? Like I want to just have fun and do whatever I want and enjoy myself. And because of that, the, my drinking frequency increased dramatically. I went from like drinking probably once every two weeks to drinking, like I would say average, like three to four days a week, maybe even five. And it wasn't like drinking a ton every day, but it was like, okay, like, I don't know, a beer sounds good right now. So I really actually started to love beer, which is very odd for me. I didn't really care for beer before. And now, you know, 
I can't say that I'm happy about my current relationship with alcohol. I feel not dependent on it, but my frequency has also obviously gone up and my relationship has gone up, has changed with alcohol to where I wouldn't like when I would drink, I would choose like I am drinking to catch a buzz. But now it's just like, I just want to have a beer with my meal. And I would like to change that. I'm hoping that I, I'm, I'm quite certain I'm going to drink a lot less now that I'm living by myself. I don't have any alcohol in the household. So that's the scenario there. Also, my eating window is much different. So my household members <laughs> would frequently stay up till like three or four in the morning. Um, and so I kind of, not completely, but my bedtime got pushed back dramatically. So my wake up time got pushed back. So my eating window changed. Um, it was very easy to kind of like sync up with other people in the house uh, when it came to socializing, being awake, that was just a scenario there. One thing that I am extremely happy about is my obsession with food dramatically decreased. The first three months approximately that I was there, I weighed all my food. My friend would be like, are you weighing blueberries? And I'm like, yeah, I'm weighing my blueberries. <laughs> and so I continued to track my food for approximately the first three months. And then I kind of just reached a point where tracking just kind of felt like a hassle. Like it wasn't fun anymore. So I stopped tracking my food and it created this extra freedom. So being in the household created distractions that made me distracted from food. But in a way I could say that was sort of kind of replaced with alcohol. Okay. But my thoughts around food decreased. Uh, I feel like my food intake decreased. The constant obsess obsession and thought of food decreased. And then I stopped tracking. And that added another element of the obsession really feeling like it's fading. I can say today that <sighs> didn't expect to get like slightly emotional. I've been kind of emotional today and I'm not going to start my period this week. So that's kind of weird. What I can say is that I can't remember the last time that food didn't run my thoughts in this way. I think that like food has been running my thoughts since I remember like binging for the first time in high school when I was like a sophomore. And literally, I think the last time my food obsession has been this low has been when I was like maybe 14 years old, 13 years old. Like it's been that long. And for that, I am grateful for that. Like has, because of like my ability to accept my body for what it is, I've been able to get to that point. And it's so freeing. And I am just over the moon grateful that I really feel like my food obsession has been decreasing. And another component of that is just like not making videos as much, not doing daily vlogs where I tell you everything I'm eating. Like if I'm constantly on here talking about it and, and addressing my food obsession, well then like, yeah, it's just gonna be in the forefront of my mind if I just keep addressing it. But like when you kind of just forget about it and you stop acknowledging it um, as consistently, like I think it's always important to acknowledge it, but like I was acknowledging it, my food obsession, like a hundred times throughout the day. Like every time I turned on my camera and thought about what I was gonna eat and I was tracking it, like I am acknowledging my food obsession Hun like a hundred times in a day. And that doesn't happen anymore. So something to consider. Like I said, I stopped tracking my food halfway through. You know, eating out of boredom didn't really exist, um, but I do feel like I would kind of drink out of boredom in a, in a sense. So I was the only person in the house that really doesn't have a job. Everyone else is like entrepreneurs that work remotely. Um, so there would be times where like everyone's like working and needs to get their work done. And I'm just like, well, you know, just gonna hang out by myself and hang out in the theater room and drink a few beers. And you know, I can't say that's the best thing, um, but it is the reality. Do I think I have a problem? That's for another video. <laughs> so that's all I have for you today is always go out there and create a life that you love.